Hi DIYers, this is Michael from AlarmGrid, and today I'm going to be showing you how to get into Z-Wave programming on a Residio Tuxedo keypad, also known as the Honeywell Home Tuxedo keypad. Um, there are actually two versions of the Tuxedo, of the new gen Tuxedo, the third generation, and um, there, there's the Honeywell Home uh, for residential use and the Residio version for commercial use, but they're the same keypad, and as such they use the same method for uh, getting into Z-Wave programming. Uh, taking a step back, uh, the Tuxedo is both a touchscreen keypad and a Z-Wave controller for a, a Vista system, a, Honey, a Honeywell Vista system. You don't uh, actually need to use it with a Vista system if you're just using it as a standalone automation controller, a Z-Wave controller or hub. Um, it does use Z-Wave Plus, by the way. Um, but in most cases, you are using it with a, a Vista system. Uh, people purchase the Tuxedo with the intention of using it to control their Vista panels. Um, th there are standalone uh, Z-Wave modules out there um, that are a little bit less expensive. Uh, so if you're just looking for a standalone automation controller, and in most cases you're not going to use the Tuxedo, but uh, you do have th there is the option available if you can provide power to it and um, just just use it as a Z-Wave device, a Z-Wave controller. Um, Z-Wave devices uh, that are enrolled with the the Tuxedo they get uh, pushed over to Total Connect 2.0, so you can control your um, your Z-Wave devices remotely using um, an app on your phone or a web browser. But uh, getting into Z-Wave programming is uh, very simple. Uh, we're at the main screen of the Tuxedo here, and we just choose Devices. And then you see the, the submenu options at the bottom of the screen, and we just choose uh, the Z-Wave setup icon. That's, that's like a Z with a circle, and then like two uh, semicircles coming out of it, uh, two curved lines, I guess, coming out of it. So we just click on that. And that, that just like that, we're in the Z-Wave uh, setup menu, the Z-Wave programming menu, where we can do Z-Wave activities. Uh, which we're going to demonstrate some right now. Uh, just to point out the options down here, uh, the main ones you'll be working with are add device and remove device. Uh, you do want to remove a device or clear it from the network before you go and uh, attempt to add it. Even if the device is brand new, it might have uh, some residual fact uh, factory data on it. Uh, so it's always a good idea to clear it out first. Um, and we have a Z-Wave lock down here, so we're going to use that for um, our testing purposes today. Um, and we did wait a bit too long, so it did do a timeout on us. So we'll just go back, again, Devices, and then Z-Wave Setup down at the bottom. And so uh, let's try removing this device from the network. We'll click Remove Device. And it says uh, Start Remove Device. Um, please press the function key on the device. This will vary depending on the device you are using. So refer to the manual for your Z-Wave device. In our case, our Quick Set Lock just has a button that we press. And it says Device Removed. Uh, we press the button, which is the Inclusion Exclusion button on the lock, and it sends a signal to the, the tuxedo, and the tuxedo knows to clear it from the network. So it even gives us the message, device removed. Uh, just simple as that. If we want to add a device, we'll click on Add Device, and now it's asking us to add, and we press the same button on the, the lock. And we'll give it a second here. And we'll try to press the OK, there, it just took a little bit to go through. Um, sometimes it can do that on the tuxedo. But it is adding controller unit. Um, sometimes with locks, it can take a little bit for the signal to you know, enroll successfully. Um, we do get some information here. Um, it, this uh, was an S0 device. Um, but if it's S2 capable, then um, we should re-add it to get it on the S2 network. Uh, this lock's not capable of the S2 protocol. So that's why we're getting this message. Um, so we're, we're totally fine with that. So we're just going to click OK. Um, we don't want to remove it just because of its uh, lack of security, so to speak. Um, not that it's not secure. S0 is still pretty secure, but uh, there is that upgraded S2 option. Um, anyway, so that, that's uh, the Z-Wave setup menu. Um, we click on the device. Um, we can do some device setup here. And uh, we can name it if we want to. Um, we can configure some other settings, but we'll click the Save button, the check mark icon down here. Um, and if we go back, which we'll do that, uh, we can see our Z-Wave device that we added on the screen. And we'll just go and uh, we'll lock it. You see that went through pretty quickly. Uh, we can do the unlock option as well. And you see that our uh, Z-Wave device is enrolled with the Tuxedo. Um, and we can uh, configure it as needed from there if we want to set it up with some smart scenes for automatic operation. And it's pretty much the same regardless of which Z-Wave device you're using. Um, just uh, when you're adding or removing, uh, make sure to refer to the manual because um, Every Z-Wave device can be enrolled or cleared from the network a little bit differently. Um, they follow different processes. In this case, like I said, we have a button. Some locks will require you to enter in a code, um, and, like a sequence of commands to perform an enrollment exclusion function. Um, a lot of Z-Wave lights just have a button on them. Uh, make sure your device is powered on. Um, if, you, if it's not receiving power, then it won't be able to transmit a signal. 
so keep that in mind. But really, just refer to the manual. And other than that, it's just a simple process, like I've shown two other times in the video, devices, and then Z-Wave setup at the bottom. So that's how you access the Z-Wave setup menu uh, for a Tuxedo keypad. Uh, if you have any questions about the Tuxedo or about Z-Wave technology, about home automation, smart homes, uh, send an email to support at alarmgrid.com. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up below to like the video. And remember to subscribe to our channel for updates on future videos. We hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.